Legend power. Love Stunner. An absolute what? stunner. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We are live in the mecca of kickboxing. We are in the Netherlands for one of the biggest nights in the history of kickboxing. One night, eight-man heavyweight tournament. You got to win three fights in order to win the title. There's Big Cookie Asaro. He's one of the favorites, but no one has more fanfare around him than that man. The Glory World Heavyweight Champion, unbeaten in over a decade, Rico Verhoeven, but he's never won a tournament of this magnitude before. We are live at the Helderdome in Arnhem, the Netherlands, about an hour south of Amsterdam. And boy, is it gonna be something special. Hello, I'm Todd Grisham. Next to Glory's original Hall of Famer, Joseph Baltolini, and crazy Antonio Plaza, about the number one ranked heavyweight contender in the world. I know you were desperate to be in this tournament tonight. How is your health? Well, the health is uh, going great. The arm is not still 100%. That's why I'm not participating. But just being here right now, I want to fight everybody. Now I want to fight you. I want to knock out Joe. I want to. I want a piece of everybody tonight. So cannot wait to show to start finally. Yeah, I'm coming back from a broken arm. Hopefully we can see you see you as soon as this summer. Joe, what a night for Antonio to join us on commentary, an eight-man tournament. I know it's really unfortunate that he's not in it, but to have his insight all night is going to be incredible for everybody. All right, let's take a look at the brackets tonight. Everyone had to qualify for this tournament. We've got four quarterfinals, two semifinals, and then the final. That's how the mouth works out. Three three-minute rounds. The best thing to do is knock your opponent out in the first round and then take a break, but that's not how it usually works out. It is a grueling tournament. And our first fight of the night, Joe, Levy Richters and Uku. This might be one of the most exciting of the quarterfinals. Levy Richters, tall technician against Uku Urendal, the big powerhouse who we last saw knock out Badahari, which is huge for him. So I'm excited for this one. I'm not going to ask you who you're rooting for, Antonio, but the guy on the left did break your arm, Cookie Asaro. Uh, I'm not rooting for nobody tonight. I want to beat them all. Right now, I think this is classical. Power against speed, aggression against technique. This will not end soon. Asaro versus the Golden Wolf, Baram Rajab Jade. And then, Joe, on the other side of the bracket, our youngest fighter from Morocco, Nabil Shichab, against a tournament veteran. Yep, it's about youth and, you know, the experience of Adik Bui, but the size of Kahab, he's doing so well. At his young age, he's just been a tear tank for a reason, the way he comes forward, his pressure, his combinations, as we all say, don't judge a book by its cover because his conditioning and cardio is incredible. And then last, but certainly not least, the king of kickboxing is back. Uh, this is Rico, a big favorite in this tournament, but don't write out Sufian because I really think he's ready for an upset tonight. I have a weird feeling all day about this fight and I wonder what's gonna happen. We will find out soon and by, by the way, by the way, oh, there are two world title fights, Joe, to Johnny Bestati against a very confident Enrico Kiel. Yeah, fireworks all from the start. Enrico Kale already when he came to glory, the first thing was on his mind to Johnny Bestati. I want the champ. Every time he wins, he calls him out. But to Johnny, he's been sitting at the top, so technical, so sharp, so confident that I think this is going to be a great matchup. And then at the bottom of your screen, a light heavyweight championship is on the line. Yeah, this is a true grudge match. These two guys really don't like each other. Donegia Bane against Tariq Ababes. My opinion, Tariq Ababes, a little later rounds, early rounds, Donegia Bane because of his explosiveness and technique. It's going to be a hell of a fight. That's coming up in about 30 minutes. Here's how you can watch, depending on where you are in the world, and glory continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Want to welcome our new television partners in the United States and Canada. Bally's live in stadium and in Belgium and France. We're on DAZN and of course here in the Netherlands, it is Videoland. 
Final thoughts, Joe. What is your advice to people entering this tournament? Well, the thing is, everybody's thinking about the second and third fight. The first fight is the most important. It's staying focused for that and realize there is no second fight without the first. Well, I think you need to go in, try to win the knockout as soon as possible, even the first, even the second fight, so you have the bigger chance in the third fight. Simple. Well, that's how you approach every fight, whether it's a tournament or not. He is Antonio Plaza. He'll be with us all night long. So, too, will be Tim Hughes. We send it to him now. Heronov Arnhem! Good evening! Welcome to a special night, a historic night of kickboxing for the Glory 8-Man Heavyweight Grand Prix. Plus, included on this card tonight, two title fights, five rounds for the lightweight and five rounds for the light heavyweight championship of the world. We're about to get started, but before we get our first two fighters to the ring, help me bring out our glory girls, Stephanie, Bella, and Karina. A big hand for our glory girls. Our first fight of the night is a reserve bout for the heavyweight tournament. The winner of this fight will be on standby in case one of our other fighters inside the tournament bracket is unable to continue later into the evening. Making his way to the ring, he first stepped onto the glory stage in Copenhagen at Glory 29. Chiha! Six of his last nine made his debut one year ago at Glory 82. Here is Mikhail Blazovic. So Blazowitz makes his way to the ring. Joe, he hasn't won in glory yet, but as you mentioned, he thinks he can beat Chiad. He nearly did it in their first fight. Yeah, it just, he was, didn't have the cardio, wasn't focused enough, so this is the time it's like, I have a lot of pressure on myself. And this is my chance to show it. So whether he's in the tournament or not, he needs to perform well for himself. The long catwalk tonight here at the Helgerdome. Can't wait to see Rico do his sprint later on. I wonder if Rico's going to sprint all three times if, if <laughs> he's got to win it. it. Yeah. On the opposite side of things, Lazowitz taking his sweet time fighting out of Warsaw, Poland, part of Team Palestra. Has a 45% knockout rate, 11 wins, 7 losses there with 5 no KOs. Also, he also has a lot of amateur experience with over 130 fights that he could use. Here's our tail of the tape for our reserve Grand Prix bout. Lazowitz, 30 years old, six foot two, weighing at 253 pounds. Kapenik is two inches taller, but will be at a four and a half inch reach disadvantage. Our tail of the tape brought to you by Unibet. Professional experience, the edge going to Kapenik. 28 fights, 68% knockout ratio. That's the ratio we like for Blauchowicz. 19 fights with a 45% KO ratio. This tournament reserve bout is scheduled for three three-minute rounds. And introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. He's a world Muay Thai super heavyweight champion who brings with him a record of 22 wins and six losses, 15 of those wins coming by way of knockout. At six feet, four inches tall, 1.95 meters, he weighed in at 110 kilograms, 243 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Turkey, ladies and gentlemen, here is Jihad, the Ottoman Kepeni. His opponent fighting out of the wide corner, a Polish national champion, set to make his second glory appearance. As a professional, 11 wins, seven losses, one draw, and five career knockouts. At six feet, two inches tall, 1.88 meters, he weighed in at an even 253 pounds, 114.9 kilos. Fighting tonight out of Warsaw, Poland, here is Mikhail Blazu Blazowicz. And the referee in charge of this bout is Niels Burskin.
Okay, gentlemen, you both know the rules. Make it a good and clean fight and protect yourself at all the times. Shake hands if you like. Bruce, go back to your corner. Interesting note about Mikhail Blazowicz. Has tournament experience. He, in fact, reached the final of an eight-man bare-knuckle competition a few years ago. So this Polish fighter, extremely tough. Okay. First round, fight. Yes, and the, and the last fight they had, they were pretty open shots and knockdowns. So I wonder, will they continue the same? It was just power on power. Blazowicz in the white gloves. Jihad Kapinik, who fights out of Turkey in the black. Bauchovic was really upset with his cardio and his performance last fight. So a lot of him, it's he wants to show his true self. I know Kapenik can take a lot of damage to the head, but I wonder how much from Blazovic because he gets caught a lot of times pretty clean. Bauchovic is being very efficient with his strikes, really not sitting on anything yet. Playing a points game right now. Yeah, feeling him out. Nice jab there for Blazowicz as Kapenik missed with a big right hand. Right now, this is all Blazowicz game. He's doing some point style fighting, but it's Ooh. working. Kapenik's trying to sit on a right hand there. Blazowicz, you can't really tell if he's even orthodox or Ooh. southpaw. He stands so square, doesn't he, Joe? Yeah, he's doing a good job at fighting from both stances, too. If he, once he switches, he's active from the opposite stance right away. And I like the, the double right hand from back switching. Yep. Oh, nice high time. kick. And that affected Kapenik, who had to take a step back. Yeah, Blazowicz is really mixing up things good, especially with those low kicks and combinations. Straight down the pipe. This first round has not been going well for Shihad Kapenik. Yeah, and the body language of, of his looks much, much worse than Blazovic. Kapenik really trying to attack that body with that rear straight. Ooh, boy! Right hands, and Kapenik just seems to be stuck in neutral right now. He just ate another right hand, and Blazovic can go for the gusto here, it seems. Yeah, Kapenik really isn't fighting out of that shell too much. Is he trying to wear Blazovic out? <laughs> With his well, face? I don't know, but he's got to counter some of these shots. I want to see again that pull the, pull the hand, throw the right hand. That's the money shot from Blazovic. I think he can finish the fight if he's pushed the gas till the end of the round. Blazovic has landed triple the amount of strikes. It's really not good, good body language from Shihad. Yeah. To panic now, though, I'm feeling like he needs to put the pressure on. He's more successful when he is pressuring. But every time he pressures, he stays too open. Blazovic can punish him whatever he wants. Ooh, like nice this time, hand. right hands just go through. I like these little punch to low kick combinations from Blauchowicz. Body work now from Kapenik, who finally seems Joe to be waking up a little bit. Yeah, he's been really with his boxing combinations, mixing up the head and the body, trying to wear that gas tank out. Time! I, I think. Here's our fighter profiles, and you look at Blazowicz. Loves the left jab, left leg, low to high kick. Yeah, I mean, it's setting up the low kicks to get to the high kick. That's what he was working on, but he's trying to use those low kicks very well so far in this first round. And he owns a rental car company, Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> what do you own in Croatia? You've got a business? Nothing. I'm just fighting and surviving like every other fighter. Kapenik, nicknamed the Ottoman, first appeared in 2013 action film Para Kansur. Never watched that one, but we'll see. Replays, you see Blauchowicz mixing his kicks well, using his boxing to set things up. Here he's in a nice little stance switch, using boxing from there, but doing a good job picking his shots, playing nice and relaxed, trying to sit on the right punches, looking for counters. Definitely okay, a better round. first round than he had in the last fight. Yes. Good. Okay, second round, fight. Again, you are watching the heavyweight Grand Prix qualifier reserve fight. The winner of this will fill in for any fighter that gets injured in the tournament. We do have open scoring tonight, Antonio. Any surprise that all the judges gave oh, it no. to the Polish fighter? Blazowicz was just 
feeding the right hand to the Shihad Kapenik, and he is just eating it, doing nothing. On Blazovic place, I will just keep to the right hand and go straight to the middle, one, two, three times, and I think it's a fight over then. Yeah, I like what Blauchevis is countering off of this high guard. Like you said, Antonio, the counter's there. Every time, whenever he stops punching, the head is fully open. Blazovic needs to capitalize on that. But like now we see it, Shihad starting to, to put pressure on Blazovic and it's really working. Even the volume approach too, he's throwing more as he popped out of its head right there with that uppercut. That left hook would have been lights out. Blazovic Ooh. just needs to sub him with the right hand. He's letting him make, make pressure. To him. He needs a nice snapping one too. But Kapenik's pressure is starting to pay off in the second round. Yeah, pressure is working. You can Ooh. Double Good left counter hook. left from Kapenik, and now he's on the front foot. And this is starting to heat up. Uh, Kapenik likes that left hook. He throws it double all the time. And the way he's fighting now, Joe, you, you might have been right. He almost gave that first round away. Yeah, I mean, watching their last fight, you really saw Blauchovic's gas tank decrease as the fight went on. So Kapenik here starting off very good here in the second. I like the pressure, the volume, the mixing of the punches and the kicks. Oh, the punches are starting to land more and more. Ooh. Oh, left hook and a doozy from Kapenik. A minute to go. Can Blausovic survive this round? That left hook is go-to punch for Shihad. Uppercut splits the guard. You can see his foundation is wobbly. Ooh, Kapenik's almost take one to give one. Oh, caught him with the right again. What a oh. cut from Kapenik and down Two, goes Blazovic. What four, a combination five, to mix in the hooks six, and the uppercuts. Seven, eight, okay. Fight. Great counter on the right hand with the left hook. It's Kapenik's body work that's setting up the headshots really well. Yeah, down for a second time. One, two, and Kapenik three, celebrating. Four. That is Second it. Down. Two knockdowns in a round, and it is over. Kapenik wanted it, and he got it. In the fighter interview, he wasn't happy with that first fight. He said, it needs to be a finish for me to be happy, and he got it. Well, the night started good. First fight, first heavyweight, first knockout. Let's just keep this going on and let's see a lot of knockouts tonight and spectacular fight. And you never know, maybe we see Shihad inside the tournament tonight. Yep, he's gonna have to stay prepared backstage, keep his wraps on, stay focused, which is a, a tough task, staying focused all night. They call him the Ottoman, fighting out of Turkey, Shihad Kopinik. Picks up his 16th career knockout in his 23rd win. He's got a 70% KO ratio. And you can see the corner of Blazovic tending to him. He had a fantastic first round, Antonio. But after that, he didn't do much. Yeah, I think the right hand that was landing, he just stopped using it. And also every time now he threw it, Shihad just countered it too good with the left hook. And from what I see, it's like his go-to punch. Double leg hook, body, Head, 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 and it just works. He showed it very good. Let's look at our highlights, and it was certainly a tale of two rounds. All five judges scored round one for Blazovic. Yeah, Blazovic was incredible in that first round. Efficient combinations, using straights to set up kicks, good pressure, good combinations. But round two was all Kapenik. Started to come forward, pressuring, mixing levels with his boxing. Found these nice little sneaky uppercuts, and found these left hooks. And at this point of the fight, it was Kapenik really finding good counter shots. Nice little sneaky uppercut, that's nasty. Back to the body, upstairs, downstairs, taking the angle, just too much power. Puts Blachowicz down to the mat. Beautiful punch combinations from Kapenik. And look at that emotion, Antonio, as Jihad Kapenik picks up a really impressive win, especially when you consider how slow and lethargic he looked in round one. And look at the drop off in round two for Blazowicz. Yeah, it's like for round one, you cannot see Shihad never. 
But round two, as soon as started, he's just like we are watching the another man. The another man came inside and just, throw, throw, just started throwing bombs and taking heads off. And it works. <laughs> Let's go into the ring as Tim Hughes makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight comes to an end with an official time of two minutes, 55 seconds of that second round by way of the maximum tournament knockdown rule. Rule to technical knockout for your winner, Jihad Kipini. I'm here with your winner, Jihad Kapenik. Last fight, you said you wouldn't be happy unless you got a knockout today, and you got it. Knockout ettim bu gece. Bugün ne diyorsun diyor. Bir önceki maçta knockout edemedim. Bu maçta knockout ettin diyor. En son maçta söylediğim gibi yumruklarım değmedi ve şimdi herkes gördü ki vurduğum zaman karşımda kimin dur kimse duramayacak. He said last fight I can uh, catch very well with right hand. Now I catch well with, with uh, right hand. Now everyone see my punch is very strong. This is the reserve belt for the tournament. What are your plans when you go backstage now? Bu turnuvanın rezerve maçı ne düşünüyorsun? Herkes dövüşürken ayağından kalsın. Çünkü kenarda bekliyorum. I can be today or I eating everyone. Doesn't matter who I, who I, who. All right, let's hear it for your winner, Jihad Kapenik. Antonio, he looks, I know he just had a, a war there, but he looks gassed already. You think he's going to be ready to come back in the tournament? I don't know. Depends on his, what his and his team thinking on doing it. But for now, yeah, after the second round, he looked pretty gassed. But also, he drove a lot of strong punches. Absolutely. Congratulations to Jihad Kapenik who fights out of Turkey. This is what the Glory Grand Prix eight-man heavyweight tournament bracket looks like. And let's take a closer look on what's on the line in about five minutes. 30 years ago, K-1 made history with its first heavyweight Grand Prix tournament. It featured legends of the sport like Peter Arts and Ernesto Hoost. But the winner, Branko Sikatic, summarized all that is best about the tournament format. Going from underdog to hero, in just one night. Last year, we drew upon our past and took a huge step forward into a new era of kickboxing tournament with the inaugural Glory Heavyweight Grand Prix. At Glory 85, Tariq Cookie Osaro became the first man to win a place in the Grand Prix after battling his way through a four-man tournament. Sofian Laduni followed with a win over Benjamin Adekbui at Glory 86. At Glory 87, Bahram Rajabzadeh blasted his way through the opposition to secure his place in the tournament. Glory 89 featured two Grand Prix qualifiers, with Uku Yuryandal smashing his way through Badahari, and Levy Richters delivering a round one TKO of Ian Tabarsianu. At Glory 90, Nabil Kaha booked his spot with a victory over Nikola Filipovic. A wild card entry brought Benjamin Adegbui into the mix, bringing us to seven men and just one place left in the Glory Heavyweight Grand Prix. Step forward, the king of kickboxing, Rico Verhoeven. Tonight, we make history with the inaugural Glory Grand Prix. The baddest men on the planet will throw down for the chance to be crowned our first ever Grand Prix champion with a purse of $500,000. With three fights in one night, anything can happen in the Glory Heavyweight Grand Prix.
Cruiserweight title on the line. Dominic Visa, the middleweight champion of the world. As you can see at the top right of your screen, we are just over two minutes away from the start of the Glory Eight-Man Heavyweight Tournament. Antonio, I see you're throwing punches in the air. You're almost as excited to watch it as you are to be in it. Hey, listen, I, I cannot wait for the show to start, for the fights to start. As we saw the first fight, knockout, second round. As soon as the fighter starting the opening, the knockout come and I'm waiting from that for the tournament. I just want to see some knockouts first round. That's my wish for tonight. Rico, obviously the, the, the tournament favorite hasn't lost to mention in over a decade here in glory. Who's your number one guy to watch, maybe an underdog or a dark horse that really could make some noise? Well, an underdog, I, I think Levy Richters is one of my underdog picks. I know he's in the top of the ranking, but I think his efficient style of kickboxing, the way he moves his length, he's efficient. I think he could be a good one to watch outside of Rico. I think we should also watch the fight between Kuki and Bahram. And I think Bahram, very entertaining guy, very aggressive. Just go forward, strong punches, throw kicks, very entertaining to watch. I, I wish he goes through. All right, let's see if the Golden Wolf can get it done. We'll see you, ladies and gentlemen, in just over a minute. The time is now. 